this chapter, we're going to introduce some of the basic ideas of probability. In this lesson, we're going to look at something called experimental probability. Okay, so now we're going to start to talk about probability, but we're going to start with experimental probability, which is um, maybe not something that you think about. Most of us, when we, when we think about probability, you ask questions uh, to someone about probability. Normally, you jump to what we call theoretical probability, okay? But probability is the chance that an event will occur, and it's typically expressed as a decimal between 0 and 1. So we've talked about that in a previous lesson here. Uh, but it can be written in fraction form and as a percentage form, and that's what we spent some time practicing just a little while ago. Now, uh, when, we, when we calculate the probability, we're usually going to symbolize the event as uh, an uppercase letter. And then we use this right here, P with parentheses around the A, to represent the probability that A, that event A, occurs. And then we calculate the probability of an event occurring by dividing the number of occurrences of A by the number of possible outcomes. So it's basically it's the number of positive things that I'm looking for divided by the total number of possible outcomes in, in an experiment here, right? So if you're looking for the, the probability, zoom in here. When you're flipping a coin here, the probability of flipping a head, well, I'm looking for the, the number of possible occurrences of, of that event here. Well, there's only one way I can get that, that head on the, on the coin, but there are two possible outcomes when I flip the coin. So that's how I'm getting that probability of 1 over 2, and, and you're already familiar with that. You would have done that a whole bunch before here. Now, experimental probability, okay, is calculated based on the observation, okay? So we're not really looking at what should happen. We're kind of looking at what has happened, okay? That's maybe the best way to look at it. It's not, not what should, okay, not what should happen, did, did, did. What has happened? So, for example, um, if if you're if you're rolling a uh, uh, let's say a die, you know that the probability that a, a six shows up should be one out of six. Okay, there's one six on the die out of six possible outcomes. So, one out of six times you should be getting getting a six. Now, you know you know that every time you roll the die that that probability is one-sixth. So it's not like, not like every time you roll six times, you're going to get a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five, and a six. You know that's not going to work here. But after a, a whole bunch of rolls, okay, after a whole bunch of them, hundreds of them, uh, the number of sixes you get should, should be about one-sixth of the time, right? And if it's not, okay, if what you're actually seeing doesn't match up, well, something weird is going on, okay? So, Experimental probability is when you look at something and you, you're, you're making a judgment based on what you're seeing there, okay? Now, the sample space, just a little bit of vocabulary here. Maybe I'll, I'll highlight the, the words that are really significant here. We need to know experimental probability, and I need you to know what sample space is. Uh, is the number of objects or events that are being counted. So it's, it's that, so really, it's this, it's the, when we talk about the number of possible outcomes, the sample space is the set of outcomes. So like, for example, when you're, when you're dealing with a coin, okay, your sample space is heads, tails. If you're talking about a, a die, well, your sample space is one, two, three, four, five, six, just for a regular six-sided die, right? Th those are, the sample space is the, is the collection of outcomes possible in this uh, particular event that we're going to look at. Anyway, let's take a look at some questions here. Okay, so now let's take a look at some questions here. So the first one is, it says, Thomas surveyed a group of students at his school about the types of movies that they preferred, and he tabulated the results. And so here you go. Okay, we've got the, the results right here. So what is the probability that a randomly chosen student prefers comedies? Okay, well, what we need to do here is we need to first of all figure out, and by the way, this is based on the, the experiment that we just did, which is why we would consider this like an experimental probability, because we went and actually looked and got the data. Well, the probability that someone prefers comedies is going to be the number of people who prefer comedies over the total. Now, I can tell you right now the number of people that like comedies is eight. That's easy. 
Now, what I don't have right off the bat is the total number of people. So what I got to do is I got to figure out what the sum is of all this. Now, 7 and 8 is going to be 15. 4, 4, and 2 is going to be 10. So what we've got here is 25. And so the probability is going to be 8 out of 25. Now, uh, that might not actually help you out all that much if, if you're not 100% kind of uh, comfortable with fractions and the way that work. So sometimes it's helpful to convert that to a decimal, okay? Because remember, probabilities are numbers between 0 and 1. And so 0 0.32, maybe that's a, a better way of writing that. Maybe that communicates more to you when you see it in that form, okay? It doesn't really matter. Now, what's the probability that a randomly chosen student prefers action or horror? So one or the other, right? It doesn't, it doesn't really matter here. So we're going to say prefers action or horror. Well, again, this is going to be out of the total. And again, I already know that that's going to be 25 because I did that sum here just a minute ago here. Now, how many students fall into the category of action or horror? Well, there are seven here for action and two for horror. So that's going to be seven. And in math, you're frequently going to see or, okay, I'm sorry, you're frequently going to see it that, that or implies addition. And so what this is going to be is 9 over 25. And let's take a quick look at what that looks like as a decimal. And it's just a little bit bigger than the previous one will be 0.36. Okay, now let's go down here. Suppose Thomas comes from a small rural school with only 200 students. How many students would you expect to prefer dramas? Now, as soon as you decide that you're going to, to take your, your uh, probabilities and make a prediction out of them, what we got to do here is we're going to do some multiplication, okay? So probabilities can be forced into these numbers that are between 0 and 1, and they kind of act really like a percentage there, right? So in order to get an actual number, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the total, okay? So we're going to multiply the total number of students in a school. So it's going to be the total multiplied by the probability. Of, of whatever it is that we're trying to do here. So probability of A here. Now, in this case here, this is going to be 200 students multiplied by the probability that they prefer dramas. Okay, so 200 students and then, well, I know that there's 25, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my 25 here in the denominator here, okay? No, it's gonna be 25 and then up in my numerator for preferred dramas, I'm gonna have four. Okay, so I've got 200 multiplied by 4 divided by 25. And when you plug that into your calculator, we can expect 32 students to like dramas. Now, does that guarantee that we're going to have 32 students that like dramas? Well, no. No, it doesn't. But it gives us a pretty good idea. And the reason why it gives us a pretty good idea here is because let's, let's just cut uh, kind of sidestep this right now. This is, the pro this is the number of students that I expect. He, he found the probability to be 4 over 25, okay? Which, when you multiply that by the total number of students, 200, that gets you uh, 32 students here. Now, how many students did he pull out of the whole school? What percentage, what percent of the school, okay, did he pull? Well, he did 25 out of 200. So 25 divided by 200, when we convert that, is going to be 0 0.125 or, oops, sorry, or 12.5% of the school. Now, is that enough really to make a judgment? Okay, do I, if he only contacted 12.5% of the school, is that really enough? Eh, well, that's arguably kind of low. Okay, now what what I suspect uh, will happen here is in, in a lot of these questions here, we're going to have to make a bit of a judgment call here. But in, in a lot of cases here, there's a, a balance between the amount of uh, effort that you put into a, a survey that you're going to do, okay, the amount of effort that you put in versus the value of the information that you're getting out of it, okay? So we'd probably argue that if, if you're talking to about, let's say, 30% of the group or so, you know, maybe, maybe 25, 30% of the group, that's probably a minimum, that's, that's probably enough, okay? Now, it, it's better if you talk to more, uh, the more people you talk to, but it might be impossible to talk to everybody. 
and not even practical to talk to everybody. So there's a bit of a, a balancing act here. Now look at this next question here. Alternately, suppose that Thomas goes to a school of 3,000 students. Is it logical to assume that his, represented, that his sample is represented of the whole population? And in this case, we have to say no. Okay, And it's because he would have surveyed Okay, now let's take a quick look at this. 25 out of 3,000. So I'm just going to go to my calculator here. 25, whoops, 25 divided by 3,000. <laughs> and we're getting 0 0.0083 dot 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 repeating here. So this is approximately 0.8%. Okay, uh, his sample, his sample is too small to be representative. Okay, that's I think that's clearly the case here, way too small. It's far better here in this in this uh, rural school, still not great. The more people you talk to, the better, but then you hit that, again, you hit that point where maybe you're putting in more effort than it's worth to get the information, right? It's, it's, like, it's like having a, a life-size map of your hometown that's not useful. That's not useful. You need you need to sacrifice some detail for it to be a, a useful thing to look at. Eh, anyway, let's take a, take a look at this next question here. It says, Tina surveyed the students in her grade about their shoe size, and here are her results. Okay, so you can see the shoe size and the number of students that have that shoe size, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, now unfortunately, all the questions got bumped to the next page. So what I've done is I've just move the numbers really, really quickly over to the other top of the other page here. So, what is the probability that a student in her sample does not have size 10, uh, a size 10 foot? Does not. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take advantage of something called a complement. Okay, and what I mean by complements here, A and B, okay, A and B are complements Okay, if the probability of A plus the probability of B is equal to 1. Okay, in other words, you, you put them together, they 100%, that's what's going to happen between the two of them there, sort of thing. Okay, now th there, there can be a little bit more involved than that, but anyway, just to give you an idea, two, complement, uh, two events are complementary if their probabilities add up to 1. So basically, if one event doesn't happen, the other one will. So in other words here, I think what we want to do here is, in order to figure out the probability that, that a, a student does not have a shoe size of 10, and we're going to write that like this, and we're going to put a bar over top. Sometimes you'll see people put an apostrophe there, but the bar over top means the negative of this. What we're going to do here is I'm going to take 100% or 1, and I'm going to subtract the probability that the person does have a shoe size of 10. Now, there are 40 people here that have a shoe size of 10. So this is going to be 1 minus 40 over. Well, now I need the total. Okay, so I'm going to go to my calculator. I got to get the, the total number of people that we're looking at here. So that's going to be 26 plus 34 plus 43 plus 40 plus 22. So altogether, that's going to be 165. So this is going to be 1 minus 40 over 165. And so now I'm just going to go to my calculator. 1 minus 40 divided by 165. And this is approximately a 0 0.76 when I round that. So this is about a 76% chance okay, that that's somebody in that group does not have size 10 feet. But we, we get that by doing the complement. I mean, the other way of doing it is, is to add up all, the, all these numbers here other than, other than 10, other than the 40 here. So add up these numbers and then divide that by 165. And that works as well. The next question, if there are 500 students in her grade, is it logical to assume that her sample is representative of the whole group? So we were talking about this just a moment ago. Well, we had 165 students here. So let's just take a quick look. 165 over 500, okay? What is that? 165 divided by 500. Well, that is 30, 0 0.33 or 33%. Whoops. Well, I don't know why I wanted to, to draw that so bad. I know my handwriting is bad at the best of times. That was weird. Okay, so 33%. Um, well, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. 
Yes, um, that is a, a, a good number without, um, without having, I guess, too much, too much effort. Okay, 30% is, is yeah, okay. okay, 30% of the group is okay. Now, given that her uh, grade has 500 students, how many would you expect to have a shoe size that is less than a size 9? Okay, to be less than a size 9 here. Now, first of all, we're going to take and we're going to take and multiply that because we want an actual number of people here. And then we're going to multiply that by the probability that the shoe size here is less than size 9. Okay? So that's going to be 500 Whoops, sorry. That's going to equal 500 multiplied by Okay, well, there are 165 total here, but how many in my sample here had a shoe size less than size 9? Well, that's just the size 7 and the size 8, so it's going to be 27, sorry, 26 plus 34, okay, plus 34. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that probability that you're less than size 9, so 26 plus 34 over 165, multiply that by, by 500. And I'll just do that in my calculator over here. Um, 165 and I'm getting okay uh, approximately 181.8 uh, and so on except that it doesn't make sense to leave that as a decimal I'm talking about a number of people here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to round that up so this is approximately 182 people okay um, you would expect would have a shoe size of less than size 9 now does that mean that that's a hundred percent Trustworthy, that's exactly what's going to work out to be. Nope. Nope. But but we do expect, you know, at 33%, um, we are fairly confident that that's going to be accurate. Clearly, the more people you survey, the more accurate that number is going to get.